Hey, we're back. What's going on? Yeah, I uh, watched Doolittle. Like I said, I would. It sucked. Which is a shame, because the cast is pretty stacked. We've got Robert Downey Jr. Of course. Antonio Banderas. Rami Malek. John Cena. Kamel Nanjani. Octavia Spencer. Craig Robinson. Voldemort. Tom Holland. Spider-Man. And of course, the best actor of the entire bunch, Selena Gomez. Surprisingly, some pretty solid animation here. I'm pretty impressed, Doolittle. Pretty impressed. He could talk no. to animals. Yeah, we knew the premise going in. Thanks, Eddie Murphy. But his heart belonged to one woman, Lily. Oh, that's cute. I hope we see more of her in this movie. Lily died. Well, fuck. Not gonna lie, it's a pretty cool transition. At least we get to meet one of the main characters. What? No, not you. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, but we can stop celebrating because this dude shoots a squirrel. <laughs> if only you were taught in acting school how to show some compassion. We have to help him. We have to help him. He's a very odd boy. The whole time Doolittle's parrot has been watching. Follow, Polly. No idea what you said. Can you guys make this out? Because I can't. Take the tank. Here it is again, but slower. So Polly's leading this random kid to do little because he shot a squirrel. Now Polly thinks that getting this kid to do little with this injured squirrel is going to restore his faith in humanity somehow. While this little mini adventure is taking place, look how terrible the CGI looks. More like computer garbage imagery. Now we're introduced to the polar bear. He's played by John Cena, but his name? Talk. Let me spoil something here. This kid wants to be a vet. He wants to apprentice under Doolittle. I don't think Stubbins is gonna make it as a vet if he can't tell the difference between a polar bear and a dog. So the bear dog backs the boy up into a team rocket trap. <laughs> then Yoshi makes a noise that I can only describe as, that's not the sound a bear makes. <laughs> I looked it up. I haven't seen any footage or heard any sounds on YouTube or elsewhere where a bear makes that sound. If anybody can prove me wrong on that, please do, because I would love to hear an actual bear make that sound. So now they're getting my boy dressed up to play chess where the pieces are mice, and the mice beat the shit out of each other. They're ready for action. So here we find out how Doolittle actually talks to animals. <laughs> Doolittle mimics animal sounds. This suggests that he was able to learn every single animal sound so that he's able to communicate with them. This would be a really opportune time to have a sponsor. If you are a representative of Duolingo or Babbel, hit me the fuck up. Ruthless aggression! Hold up. <laughs> Why is a white rat hitting a black rat? Twice. Pretty messed up. I am being facetious. I do understand the rules of chess, but... <laughs> he sounds like he's about to start talking like Donnie Thornberry. First of all, I'm not sure what this accent is. I'm not sure Robert Downey Jr. knows what this accent is. As far as I'm concerned, I'm the only human you. What did you say? I'm the only human you. You're the only shoeman? Shoeman. Yo, Doolittle, hit me up with some Nikes. They see the kid in the net from looking outside. Apparently, the whole time they're playing chess, they couldn't just look outside once. And Doolittle has a pretty natural response to seeing a child in a net. It's a nightmare! You know, as a recluse myself, I kind of understand his plight. So now we're introduced to the two child characters of the movie. Pardon me. Who are you and why should I care? Can you tell me if this is the home of John Doolittle? There's a, there's a big ass sign is back there. It says, property of John Doolittle. You probably passed it. You may call me Lady Rose. I don't think I will. We, fi <laughs> we find out what the boy's name is. Stubbins. That might be a candidate for Worst Name Hall of Fame. I don't know if it's worse than Cindy Faithful, but it's up there. Now we get more scenes of RDJ being uh, quirky. Ooh. Yeah, that'll show him. You are not a prisoner of fear. 
It's important to note that the gorilla is actually afraid of everything. This is RDJ delivering a line to a CGI gorilla about fear. So the gorilla's name is Chi Chi? No, not that Chi Chi. Definitely not that Chi Chi. So Doolittle has Chi Chi answer the door. And uh, here's the result. <laughs> So Lady Revs, she breaks in to Doolittle's house and confronts him about saving the queen's life. You have been summoned by the queen herself. All right, but you don't have to terribly act at me. Ooh, huh. Yeah, that was pretty much my reaction too. This next part is played for laughs. I'm still angry about it. She's fallen gravely ill. That's not even the most egregious thing the duck does the whole movie. So Stubbins breaks in through the window and he has the squirrel. As we know, the squirrel is in pretty bad shape. Shout out to Hot Mulligan. So at this point, Doolittle decides, all right, let's do something about it. But Lady Rose has other plans. You will not tend to a squirrel while the Queen of England's life hangs in the balance. Nah, but he is though. Right all, let's save this squirrel, shall we? Seriously, what the fuck is this accent? That's how distracted I am. I didn't realize what he was wearing because I was distracted by that putrid accent. This is it. This is it right here, where the duck doesn't stop making the same joke and this happens throughout the entire movie. This, this made me livid. Dub dub, forceps please. Here you go. That's a piece of celery. All right, whatever. It's a kid's movie. Bad jokes are gonna happen, right? Forceps dub dub. Oh, sorry. Here you go. Still celery. Let me break the news to you that there are good kids movies out there that don't beat you over the head with the same terrible joke the entire movie. More so. Carrot buddies. More so. That's a different piece of celery. You can make a good kids movie that's smart and fun and you don't have to make a kids movie that insults everyone's intelligence. Got it. More so. No, still celery. Never mind, I'll get it myself. Did you hear that sigh at the end from Robert Downey Jr.? That was everybody else's reaction whenever we had to watch that in theaters. Nobody even laughed. There wasn't child laughter. There sure as hell wasn't adult laughter. Who is this for? This movie's so bad. All right, let's get into the meat of it. Express emotional vulnerability. I feel like I did that. It still doesn't make the CGI not look like shit. Essentially, Kevin the Squirrel wants revenge against Stubbins for shooting him. He also has these flashbacks. This is really the only part that I got a belly laugh from because the imagery was actually pretty funny. At this point, I'm just begging for it to stop, but I know it won't. I know it won't. Abraham got the razor. That's stiff salary. We get it. Ooh, don't forget Doc's forceps. That's a leak. Untethered and my rage knows no bounds! Hey, at the very least, this movie had the foresight to have such an amazing cast that they relegate Kamel Nanjani to the role of an annoying ostrich. Ah, uh, today's gonna be a good day. I'm gonna do nothing, just prance around, think my own thoughts, and oh, he's walking this way. Not a great sign. He's got no beard. He looks motivated. All right, finally, the movie's picking up a little bit of steam. We're on the way to Buckingham Palace. Yippee. I will say that I do enjoy some of the movie's establishing shots. This looks pretty good. Crazy Taxi! While the establishing shots look good, any scene with the ostrich, or any of the CGI for that matter, garbage. Is that an antagonist I see? Dr. Moodfly. I forgot his name was Moodfly. Blair Moodfly may not be one of the worst names I've ever heard. It's definitely not worse than Stubbins. I shall continue to leech. My guy, that's just what bad guys do. Lady Rose, my apologies. Please forgive me, I didn't realize that you were part of- This movie? Yeah, cause she's barely in it. Poopling. Get it? Cause the guy's name is Mudfly? Nothing in the world could have prepared me for this bit of dialogue. Something smelled wrong. And that's coming from a guy who loves the smell of butts. Oh, you do love butt. Uh, on the 17th of this very month, she will perish. Well, at the time of recording, you only got nine days. You better get going. 
Queen John Hope is a cure that's never been tested from a tree that's never been seen on an island that's never been found. Well, it sounds like you have your work cut out for you. We have no choice but to embark on this perilous journey. He's supposed to have a Welsh accent. I still don't know what this is. Blair brings up Doolittle's wife, so John's reaction is pretty natural here. The wife. Shut up, bear! Shut up, bear! He keeps calling him bear, though. Shut up, bear! Don't know how I feel about that. Shut up, bear! We got Tom Holland. I got Tom Holland to do this. This must have been a personal favor to Robert Downey Jr. or something, because... This is ridiculous. Guard dog mode. Stand back, everyone! while I secure the perimeter. Even the storm outside doesn't want me to watch this movie anymore. <laughs> so they begin to set off on their journey. They meet outside of Buckingham and Stubbins begs, pleads to go with him on the adventure. Don't make me go home, please. <sighs> this scene actually made me laugh. Why didn't they just do more humor like this? This is good. Oh, ho! If I had a dollar for every time a giraffe played by Selena Gomez licked my face, I'd have zero dollars. We have Polly, Tutu the Fox, just met that character, and the giraffe, Betsy, played by Selena Gomez. They are going over Doolittle's head to get Stubbins and bring him on board the boat. And they do this by kidnapping a child. Why are they chasing us? We're not criminals! Kidnapping a child. Also, did you see how terrible that looked? I can't be the only person who saw that. That looks like shit. I'm sorry to keep reiterating that this movie looks bad. I can't help it. We cut our losses, change our identities, ditch the kid in the river. So the fox has a criminal past. I bet this was her idea. You put me in this hammock! You didn't just lay down? Everyone, look! Is that the boy? He's coming to finish the job! Oh, Craig, you are wasted in this movie. And that goes double for Octavia Spencer. She shouldn't be doing this same tired-ass leak joke. Oh, big hole, 12 o'clock! They wanted this to be a Pirates movie so badly. <laughs> now that Stubbins is on board the ship, RDJ has a few words for the bird. Darling, oh, can I have a word, please? It's all things my way. And also words for us, if you can call it that. See, this liquor is just working a treat. Yo, I didn't even notice this when I was watching it before. This may be the worst ADR I have ever seen. I've seen some bad dubbing. <laughs> Fine, the boy can stay, but it'll be in my terms. My toe. My toe. My toes. It's gonna be on my toe. Sherlock Holmes tombs. I got these! Careful with that medical equipment! Oh, did you think this dumbass joke was over? Moot fly. I wasn't talking to the squid! Bro, nobody said you were. Somebody please make a song with this sound effect. RDJ really sold the shit out of this punch, though. Robert Downey Jr. is soaking in the night Cause he's gotta travel with the little boy He's brooding in the night time I'll take my Grammy now. I think I'm beginning to understand a little bit of what the animals are saying. You've been traveling with them for like two days. There is no way you picked up on that many languages that quickly. No fucking way. Dude, I took Spanish for four years. I can barely ask someone where the bathroom Oh, pickles? Oh, you were saying warship! This whole time that you're roaring at the bear, when you can barely speak its language, you could have just been talking to the other human that's on the boat. He's right fucking there. Hello, Blair, you chinless wonder. I know you don't like him, but that's rude as shit. So they do some Aquaman shit and they get this whale to carry their ship away from Blair's men. I'm on my way. I wasn't kidding about the Aquaman stuff. The polar bear jumps in. Then he grabs a rope. Then they swim around before they put the harness on the whale. Putting the harness on a whale takes forever. This one even theorizes the existence of dragons. Oh, hey, that's foreshadowing. Seems you are getting a rudimentary grasp of their language. How? Her name was Lily. She wrote the root in a journal. 
But on her voyage, she was shipwrecked. The world lost the greatest explorer I've ever known. <laughs> Elliot, Elsie, do you mind? Do you mind? I was giving an exposition dump. So they enter Monte Verde, which is a place that doesn't really care for Doolittle that much. So Doolittle needed a disguise. Oh no. Eat your heart out, Dana Carvey. So Lily's journal is here, so they have to break in and steal it. This is how they get... This is how they get in. But Doolittle still had questionable contacts. I just now got this joke. They have an inform ant. They have a fucking inform ant on the inside. You come to me for this on the day of my daughter's wedding. Did they have to do a Godfather reference? Can't go in there on your own. Please stop. Please stop speaking in this accent. You are not nailing this. I know you probably thought to yourself, I'm killing it. You're not. There's a bunch of kitties surrounding Antonio Banderas. Stubbins is walking on a bridge so that he doesn't wake the kitties. And the dragonfly's annoying and that kitty's yawning. That kitty's yawning. Antonio Banderas has a gun. Now he's looking at the eye of the tiger. Now he's leaning on a whisker and kitty says... <laughs> Stubbins finds a secret chamber and then he gets caught. And then Doolittle gets captured. George! Go touch. Ho ho! Yes! Finally, some action down here. At two, Will Arnett. At two. I think Doolittle did a little doo doo. Did do a little do a little doo doo. Clearly, someone looked at the box office numbers. Dr. Doolittle, remember me? Oh! Oh, that's Barry, played by Ray Fiennes. That's his name. I implore people who review movies on YouTube to stop calling him fucking Ralph. <laughs> Rob the jewelry store and tell him make me a grill. Barry! To do little stuff! <laughs> They're really celebrating killing a dude, huh? Yes, mother, I know! Aw, he's got mommy issues. Your migraines are brought on by severe maternal issues and compounded by sibling rivalry. Come here, Barry. I can fix you. I will never be good enough. <laughs> okay, now you're starting to hit a little too close to home. And this is my favorite performance of the movie because it's so darn cute. You can't out smart. Oh, what was that? I know it's over here. The animals on the boat get word that Doolittle is stuck in an enclosure with Barry. Be a darling and grab my dynamite, will you? You're fucking what now? Hope this is enough. <laughs> Yo, she killed people. So Chi Chi and Barry start duking it out. Ah! Oh, oh, it's okay to be scared. You should be scared. I didn't even have to slow this part down. Oh! Yeah, dude, he already won. You didn't have to ruin it by saying this. How oh, my Barry Barrys? Back at Buckingham Palace. Oh shit, are they doing this? No way. No. It was a false alarm. Irony is when you find a woman and she makes your life more wonderful than it had any right to be, and then poof, she's gone. My guy, I don't think so. Irony is me wanting to kill you with every fiber of my being. Did you guys have dictionaries in Victorian era England? I would laugh so hard if he killed the duck right now. Antonio Banderas is Lily's dad, and he doesn't like Doolittle, but he does give him a boat to chase Moodfly after all. Because Doolittle is trying to keep Lily's memory alive, and Antonio Banderas is just down with that, because he also wants to keep his daughter's memory alive. Hi! <laughs> I'm Jeff! Ah, see, they tried to do the thing. They tried to do the thing that the internet tries to do all the time. You know, the thing. I'm not going to do the thing. So a montage happens where they look at maps and they sail and Robert Downey Jr. stands on top of the boat, almost like it's the Titanic. We do finally get to the island. We see these establishing shots of the island itself and the cave they have to enter. It's kind of breathtaking. Maybe this is where the budget went. Sure as fuck wasn't the CGI. So Robert Downey Jr. puts his hand on a rock and starts glowing. This is how he reacts. Fox fire, Fox. I use Chrome. 
Go on then, soldier boy. Spoil yourself. You! How does ignorance feel? Well, I imagine it'd be like sitting through this movie more than once. Do you remember that foreshadowing I was talking about? Okay, okay, okay. Moonfly is actually kind of funny. Take him, not me! I'm a good person now! So the dragon barfs on a dude and then eats him. And this happens to Moonfly. <laughs> this is the part that I've been dying to talk about. And now I finally have a chance. Three years later. You have a severe impaction of the colon. We need to perform an emergency extraction. You're probably thinking to yourself, this isn't happening. You might feel a bit of pressure. Okay, dragon butthole, here comes the airplane. Oh, good heavens! Oh my god! Oh my god! And here's the climactic ending to that suspenseful scene in full. One last push, madam, if you please. How do those still work? Did somebody shove bagpipes up that dragon's ass? Did the dragon shove bagpipes up her own ass? Whatever. Whatever, dude. I don't care. <laughs> what the fuck? So they get the fruit from the Eden tree and they're on their way back to Buckingham Palace. They're almost too late. Somebody call a doctor! They find out that Lord Badgley was the one who poisoned the queen and then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Sorry, but... Sorry. <laughs> tosses the fruit to Stubbins and Stubbins drips the juice into the queen's mouth like so. Queen gets better. Lord Badgley gets sent to wherever the fuck they send people. Yeah. Movie's over. Uh, how did I feel about Doolittle? Movie sucks. I saw this in theaters. Movie's terrible. Redeeming qualities. Maybe the establishing shots. I don't know, anything but CGI, because everything looks bad. What else did I like? Nothing. This movie is terrible from front to back. I sat through it as many times as I had to. I don't think I will ever watch Doolittle ever again. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was hell. Next, we're going to watch Grim Cuddy from 2022. It's basically that thing that was on the internet that parents were afraid of. Their kids watching a YouTube video, and then all of a sudden, there's this thing that wants your kids to do something to themselves. Um, they made that into a movie. That's what we're doing next. Grim Cuddy, 2022. Like, comment, subscribe. Give your homies a smooch on the mouth.